Um, I am Vivek. Uh, I'm engineering manager with Meta. Uh, <clears throat> I've been with Meta for two and a half years, and I've been supporting Presto team for over a year. Uh, it's a huge privilege to be here and then, then kind of giving this talk uh, in front of all of you. Uh, first of all, I do want to apologize for not being there in person. Um, it's for family reasons. The fact that I'm doing this from like halfway across the world in a time zone, which is 13 hours ahead of PST, uh, is you should see that as a kind of a commitment of Meta's to, to, to Presto community in general. Cool, uh, let's get into it. Uh, Sinar, in my uh, talk today, um, I wanted to give like a little bit of a brief introduction into Presto project. Tim has covered that in a lot more detail, so I'm just gonna breeze through it in like 20 seconds. Uh, but most of the talk is gonna center around two themes, which is uh, Presto's role uh, in Meta. Uh, Tim did talk about Presto being like an Indian, which is suitable for huge companies as well as uh, uh, startups and things like that. And through Meta's case study, I think we'll walk you through uh, how Meta is using Presto and what is scale and stuff like that. Uh, in the second part of the talk, we will talk through some of the strategic shifts uh, in Meta's uh, strategy on how we use Presto and how we think about the compute all up, which has happened in 2024, uh, and give you a little bit of an overview of that. And then finally close the talk with the uh, conclusions and next steps. All right, so first up, introduction. Uh, nothing new here. A um, lot of it, as I said, Tim covered in the great details. Presto is an open source distributed SQL query engine. Uh, we open sourced it in 2013, donated to Linux Foundation in 2019 uh, with a bunch of foundation members from Meta, Uber, Alibaba, Intel, AN, etc. Uh, architecturally, it is a shared everything architecture. So basically, all the queries end up sharing the resources in a cluster. Uh, and then engine was generally optimized for latency or scalability, although we have made a ton of uh, investment later on to make the engine a lot more scalable. Uh, next up, uh, Presto's role in Meta. To understand Presto's role uh, in Meta, um, the, in next few slides, I'll basically talk through a little bit of uh, Meta's business itself uh, from like the data uh, data infrastructure perspective, right? Uh, so when we think of Meta's business, right, uh, we do transform raw data into real-world actions. Uh, and then this is starts from logging itself. Uh, so in Meta, we are logging a whole ton of data, uh, raw sensory data about the world into our systems with user's consent. Uh, and then we have our batch systems uh, at high, which are processing massive amount of this sensory data and then turning them into distilled and kind of curated signals uh, about the world. Um, and then we have a set of interactive system. People leverage those interactive systems, turn those curated signals, uh, hack them further, distill them further, and convert them into business insights, right? Uh, and then we have a products, our recommendation systems, our AI agents, uh, which take action on these insights, right? So that's kind of the journey of our business in general uh, from data perspective, all the way from logging a whole bunch of sensory data about the world into our system to processing them at a at a huge scale and then making further uh, curated human assisted in business insights and then our products our AI agents end up using those insights um, so when we look at this business there are basically two broad systems at the center of it uh, batch and interactive uh, on batch size these are hyperscale computational systems a lot of it is involves asynchronous background execution, massive, massive uh, machine footprints, right? On the interactive side, uh, this is a lot of it is human scale understanding of data. Generally, a human or a person is waiting on their workflow. Uh, and a lot of these systems have a huge impact on keeping the whole company and uh, uh, everybody in the company productive because you are in the middle of the human workflow. Now that we have like an overview of Meta's business, Let's take a look at where Presto fits in this, right? Presto is right at the center uh, of this business. Uh, when we take a look at the interactive side of the house, Presto exclusively serves pretty much all interactive traffic uh, in Meta, right? Uh, but when we look at the batch side of the house, we serve majority of the batch traffic uh, by query count, but when it goes, goes to very, very large queries, we share uh, some of that with Spark, right? But overall, at Meta's scale, we are up, Presto is the center of 
both interactive and batch uh, processing businesses. Let's take a look at some of the scales. Uh, I can't share the exact numbers, but this is the order of magnitude, right? Uh, our warehouse uh, on Presto itself is in exabytes uh, of the size, right? Uh, with exabytes of data being replicated uh, on a daily basis. Uh, we are ingesting petabytes of new data every single day. Uh, we have tens of millions of hive table. Um, we're doing exabytes of physical reads uh, of queries every single day. We have tens of thousands of pipeline and tens of thousands of monthly active users, right? Um, and all of this is kind of replicated across multiple namespace, multiple regions across the world, right? Uh, so suffice it to say, when we talk about the scale, there are very few other deployments of Presto which will match the scale at which Meta is operating, right? And this probably should, so as an example, if it can work for Meta's needs at this scale, it will definitely work for other, uh, other scales and things like that, right? Uh, when we look at uh, it from interactive uh, side, right, we have uh, tens of thousands of monthly exploratory analytics users, uh, hundreds of thousands of dashboards built which run on top of Presto, right, and which are used by tens of thousands of daily uh, users across the company. There are hundreds of thousands of metrics built uh, which, are, which, which are basically driving the decision making for the company. Uh, and then there is like hundreds of uh, petabytes, uh, daily petabytes rates. Again, again, when you look at this scale, what it goes on to show that pretty much large part of the company uh, in Meta depends upon Presto every single day to make decisions, to drive decisions, drive business outcomes and things like that. So Presto sits at right at the center of both of our batch processing uh, business as well as interactive uh, business which allows company to make faster decisions, keeps company productive and things like that. Cool. Uh, let's look at some of uh, our customers or users um, in Meta. Uh, so we have some of the more traditional users, analytics users, right? These are data engineers and data scientists. Uh, but I think that's doing, uh, that's doing a little bit of a disservice, right? Like the Anybody who consumes data or authors data, uh, they could be software engineers, uh, they could be uh, program managers, uh, they all fit into that analytics users, right? And when you look at by like company size, majority of the company uses Presto as analytics user. Uh, we have some critical data applications within the company which exclusively run on top of Presto. Some of these are traditional dashboarding application or exploratory analytics applications but there are a lot more advanced uh, use cases outside those use cases, traditional use cases as well, like our CRM solution which sales organizations use, uses, uh, and many, many others. Uh, more on more uh, kind of evolving use cases around ML and it's like that, whole bunch of MLE engineers use Presto uh, through their notebooks and stuff like that as well. Uh, experimentation. So Meta is a very, very data-driven company. Uh, almost everything we ship through our products, uh, which goes to generally general availability, has gone through extensive amount of uh, A-B testing. I don't think there is a software engineer in Meta which has lived here, at, at least in our product groups, which has worked in at any length of time and has not used experimentation platform, right? Uh, experimentation platform in Meta run on top of Presto almost exclusively. There's some users of Sparks, but with Presto CMO and Velox, that offering is becoming more and more attractive. Um, our AI uh, recommendation systems use Presto for data prep, data prep and data analysis and things like that. And there are a lot more use, those uses are uh, increasing over the period of time. Uh, and finally, we do all of that in uh, privacy compliant and secure way. So our privacy systems uh, use Presto um, um, day in and day out, right? So when you look at all of these use cases, again, I want to highlight how critical Presto is to kind of Meta's business across all of these use cases, right? Uh, with that, uh, let's kind of uh, shift to the, the second uh, part of this uh, uh, talk today. Uh, some of the strategic shifts uh, in 2024. But before we talk about strategic shifts in 2024, I want to kind of uh, recap uh, from last year's PrestoCon, um, like a little bit of 2020, in 2023, where were we going strategically, right? And Tim covered some of this um, as well, right? 
we had existing deployments of Presto, and then with Velox, uh, uh, we pressed a SEMO, uh, Presto on Spark. We have also have deployment of Spark, right? Uh, so there's some things we were kind of doing, right? We were trying to consolidate our language layer uh, through uh, Pres Presto uh, and then Presto, uh, Presto on Spark, uh, so that Presto SQL becomes the language by which basically pretty much all the authoring and things like that happens in company. Uh, and then Velox uh, was the engine via which we wanted to kind of execute all the evaluation uh, layer and execution layer across the across our engines, right? Uh, but there has been some change and evo evolution in our business uh, realities, right? Let's kind of talk through them. Uh, with our Velox investments, like one of the things we notice is Presto itself is capable of handling a lot larger queries than it was able to do in the past, right? Uh, with all the efficiency gains, things which used to take three hours to execute can be executed now in under an hour, right? So the Presto on Velox or Presto Simba itself has kind of gained a whole ton of efficiency, efficiency and is right shifted in terms of the size of the queries and things like that we can run. Uh, with the advent of the Gen AI within the company, the demand for PySpark and other popular OS, OSS libraries also kind of grew significantly higher. Uh, there were significant new demands on Presto it's ecosystem itself coming from the AI and then Gen AI side of the things, right? Uh, and as was the trend across the, across the industry, uh, our teams were required to kind of consolidate their investment in fewer areas and stuff like that. Uh, with that, we basically took a look at our customers. Um, um, this is not an exhaustive list, but like a, I think a good rubric which helped influence our decision making. Uh, so on the on the authoring side, uh, our, one of the challenges our uh, a customer face is they work with two different SQL dialects uh, from Presto SQL and HQL. Uh, when we look at authoring pipelines with a lot of custom code, this is generally possible in Spark. Presto supports some of this, but not to that extent. Uh, when we look at rapid iterative pipeline development, a lot of this can only happen in Presto, right? Like Spark doesn't support that. Uh, SLOs, Presto generally is a better engine for providing latency, efficiency, and reliability up to a certain scale when you start hit hitting kind of Presto limits and things like that. Uh, and then on reliability and efficiency side, it is kind of a bit hard for our users to know what is the right engine of their choice. Uh, and even if they make the right choice at the beginning, as the data grows and their need for customization increase, uh, how do we kind of shift from one engine to another and things like that, right? Uh, when we looked at this kind of changed uh, business realities or changed uh, evolution and business needs, as well as um, kind of our customer segment, basically what we uh, decided to kind of our going forward strategy is uh, two engine, two dialects, right? Um, so basically, to adapt to this new rea new reality, our engine strategy is being aligned to more our interactive and kind of batch workloads. A story where Presto SQL and Presto will serve interactive and batch workloads that are latency sensitive and benefit from Presto as a streaming architecture, while PySpark uh, and Spark will serve super large batch workloads requiring ton of customizability, scale, and kind of predictability. Uh, wh what does this mean from our developer author developer workflows perspective, right? So when we look uh, take a look at our existing workflows, developer use our DAC DACRI, which is our exploratory analytics uh, uh, product. Basically, you write SQL queries in that and run them against Presto. Uh, they author Presto SQL and test against Presto. Uh, and when we use a run against Presto's limit, uh, Sapphire or Presto on Spark used to be the bridge without having to rewrite the queries, right? Uh, and previous it's, it's iterations of the strategy enabled this. Uh, Tim talked about this as, as well as a tool to scale Presto for super large queries. Uh, with some of the changes we in the strategy, the two engines, right? With Presto SQL and Presto is still default engine of the choice for pretty much vast majority of our customers. Earlier, Sapphire allowed customer to extend beyond Presto limits without having to rewrite their pipelines. Uh, but going forward, customers who hit Presto limits will have to rewrite uh, some of their pipelines. Uh, we will we are providing more tooling and guidelines to our kind of customers to improve their developer experience. Cool. Uh, with that, let's take a look at some of the conclusions um, uh, and next steps. Right. Uh, 
So what does that change in strategic shift means for us? Right. We continue to double down on Velox and Prestacino uh, and a scaling Presto. Uh, there is going to be multiple talks on that track um, uh, later today. We have made tremendous amount of progress this year in Meta uh, in kind of, um, I think I don't have the top of the mind exact number, but let's say a sizable portion of our batch warehouse is still, uh, has started running already on uh, Prestacino and Presto and Velox, right? Uh, our strategy, as part of our strategy, we'll continue to unify execution across the engine through Velox. Um, we, are incre we have increased our investment in few areas. One, making Presto first-class interactive engine, uh, because this is the only engine which keeps the whole company productive. And we have made a ton of progress uh, in this area itself uh, in 2025, uh, saving thousands of years uh, worth of hours, uh, worth of uh, time for uh, from hum for humans in uh, Meta to keep them more productive. Uh, we have increased our investment in making Presto more ready uh, with AI and ML-centric uh, features. This is things like Nimble, which is columnar data format. Um, uh, we uh, open sourced it earlier this year. Uh, things like feature reordering, merge joins, long user sequences to call the few, but there are numerous other things. But Basically, we are investing a lot more in that area. And then we are also investing a lot more in kind of building OSS Spark ecosystem uh, here. What we have done, though, we have reduced uh, investment in language consolidation uh, on Presto and Spark. Uh, I do want to call out that Presto and Spark is still a supported thing. It's just that we have, have reduced our investments um, uh, in this area to increase our investment in some of the other areas based upon change business reality. All right, that covers uh, the two themes I wanted to cover. I do want to kind of uh, call out uh, some of the key talks happening from Meta uh, today. So please tune into them. Uh, Presto at Meta for Interactive Warehouse by Nickel. Query Optimization for Meta Workloads by Philong. Number of talks on uh, Presto C++. This was a huge, huge focus area for us this year. Uh, uh, Presto C mode towards general availability by Sergey and Prestissimo demystifying uh, expression evaluation via Vikram. Uh, and then finally, uh, 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 a Presto Pi, which is enhancing SQL with Python uh, via Srini. Cool. Repeating some of the stuff uh, Tim said, please do get involved in the community through Slack, uh, on Presto or Vlogs, uh, filing issues uh, on our Git, GitHub, sending a PR request, uh, contributing to blog posts in community, numerous ways to contribute. And finally, uh, we are hiding at Meta. Uh, uh, so, so if you are kind of looking for opportunities to contribute to Presto uh, while working at Meta, please reach out to me, Pedro, or anybody else who is kind of uh, Meta's, uh, who is from Meta uh, and you, uh, you have access to in the PrestoCon. Thank you.